Welcome to Coffee Break, five minutes with God, five minutes in the Word of God, five minutes designed to taste and see that the Lord is good. Going through the book of Psalms, as usual here on Coffee Break, we come to Psalm 44, verse 22, where the writer says, Yea, for thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And he says it's for your sake, it's because we're doing what is right in your eyes, and this is what is happening to us. If you expect a pat on the back from the world and from lukewarm Christians— because you proclaim the word of God and you take a stand for God's word and you don't back down and you're a true fundamentalist, meaning you believe what the word of God says and you stick to it the best that you can. If you're expecting a pat on the back from these folks, your expectations are way too high. God never promised it. Jesus promised the exact opposite. You will have trouble. If they hated me, Jesus said, they will hate you also. And so that's what Israel is experiencing right now. They were suffering, not for sin. They were suffering for their loyalty to God. And at least at this point, God was not providing an escape for them, except through death. And don't discount that, because often that is the escape. It was the escape for Jeremiah. It was the escape for Ezekiel. It was the escape for Isaiah, it was the escape for John the Baptist. Death was the escape from trouble and persecution for living for God. Death is the way relief came to Jesus as well. Death is the way relief and victory come to all martyrs for Christ and to all Christians in general, ultimately, because God has never promised us health, wealth in this life. He's never promised us prosperity for living for Jesus. That's a lie of the word of faith teachers to get your money. 23. Awake. Why sleepest thou? O Lord, arise, cast us not off forever. He can't understand why evil seems to be winning. He doesn't understand God's inaction. So he comes up with the theory that God must be sleeping. He's taken a nap. But you know, the Bible says that God does not sleep, nor does he slumber. He doesn't even get tired. He doesn't doze off. He doesn't daydream. He's speculating because he can't figure out why things are bad and they're not getting better. Well, it's okay to speculate about certain things, but speculation about God is not good ever because it often misrepresents him, and we don't want to do that. 24. Wherefore hidest thou thy face, and forgettest our affliction, and our oppression. When God allows things that we do not understand, when his ways are mysterious to us, it is okay to ask God in a nice way, in a respectful way, if he would explain things. It's hard to understand why God's people must suffer so much sometimes. So ask God if he would explain things. Go ahead. 25. For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaveth unto the earth. When God allows things that we don't understand, and they are bad, and it's to the point where your belly is bowed down to the earth. I mean, when your soul is down, you when your soul is down, you are down for sure. A hurting soul is more miserable than a sick body. Because... A healthy soul, a strong soul with faith in God can sustain a sick body. But if your soul is gone, man, then then you're going to be in despair. 26. Arise for our help and redeem us for thy mercy's sake. And God has a lot of mercy. The best and most safe and most effective appeal to God for change is one that is rooted in his mercy. And really, as a sinner, we have nothing else going for us except his mercy. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for God's word. And when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the, click the uh, donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. I'll see you next time here on Coffee Break.